नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा यूर वॉचिंग परस्पेक्टिव वर्क फ्रॉम होम विच बिकेम अ कॉमन फीचर फॉर ऑलमोस्ट एवरी वन ड्यूरिंग द फर्स्ट ईयर ऑफ द कोविड नाइन्टीन पैंडमिक इज हियर टू स्टे द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स हैज नोटिफाइड एन अमेंडमेंट टू द टू थाउजेंड सिक्स स्पेशल इकोनॉमिक जोन रूल्स अलाउिंग अप टू फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ टोटल एम्प्लॉयज ऑफ आई टी एंड आई टी इनेबल सर्विसेज टू वर्क फ्रॉम होम द न्यू रूल्स केम आफ्टर देर वर कॉल्स फ्रॉम द इंडस्ट्री टू मेक अ प्रोविजन for a country wide uniform work from home policy for all special economic zones incidentally the work from home rules come shortly after the netherlands passed a law to establish home working as a legal right in the process becoming one of the first countries to enshrine such flexibility in law so what do the new rules say why is work from home in demand and is it going to be the future we'll try and get perspectives on some of these aspects and related uh, subjects of the issue as well from distinguished panelists joining us on the program a uh, pleasure to welcome mr saurabh chandra former secretary dipp ministry of commerce and industry also mr ak bhattacharya uh, editorial director business standard and mr sanjay agarwal chairman paramount group thank you gentlemen for joining us on this edition of perspective welcome to sunset tv uh mr chandra allow me to begin the program today with you uh tell us more about the uh, work from home rules that have been notified and what category of employees are going to benefit from this provision you see as per the notification employees of it and its scz it extends to basically scz employees the employees who are temporarily incapacitated employees who are traveling employees who are working outside it's restricted to 50% of the work the people who will be working from home will have to be disclosed to the development commissioner and permission taken now work from home is necessary because you see labor is a very important factor of production to remain competitive you have to be productive you have to be in tune with your competitors scs have to compete with services worldwide products worldwide and similarly with people who are working outside the scs and therefore there is a need for a policy planning can only take place when the policy is consistent it is predictable and such a policy has now been brought into force because earlier a couple of individual scs had issued their own notifications therefore the need for a uniform policy it is timely and it is necessary okay mr agarwal your perspective on you know the need of such a uniform policy uh, obviously it's come on the demand of the industry or that wanted a uniform policy but tell us more about uh, you know why work from home has now increasingly become a demand among people who are looking for you know such kind of jobs and also is it going to stay mr agarwal you see covid has been a watershed event uh, in the actual uh, thinking and the way uh, all of us have behaved uh, have uh, have been earlier working as society and now that uh, the new uh, uh, new methods of working or let us say a new paradigm of working came up with uh, having covid having spread and people unable to actually move uh, that was the necessity at the time of uh, the you know covid uh, pandemic in the country or even across the world but the the advantages and the practicalities uh, involved and have evolved over these two years to an extent where it is very clear that it is not necessary now i am repeating it is not necessary for an employee to be coming to the workplace to accomplish the work uh, or to get the work done so that becomes uh, in many cases uh, employees uh, claim to be uh, more productive and even the employers claim that they are getting better productivity maybe for nothing else than for the simple reason that the in in metro cities the employee spends so much time in commuting that that uh, that commuting time itself uh, saps away a lot of energy for the for the uh, for the employee and in addition of course uh, if you look at the other aspects uh, you are causing less pollution you are uh, causing uh, having less traffic on roads all of these things 
uh, but i think ultimately these things can only be uh, looked at by enabling legislations not by any mandatory legislation even for the secs this legislation was needed because probably the secs rules are such that if uh, a more than a certain number of employees or rather uh, more than a certain amount of work gets accomplished physically outside the secs they might not be able to get uh, continue to enjoy the benefits of ACZ, and it's there. that's the reason probably why uniform rules across the nation were required for ACZs. But at the same time, we have to realize that the number of employees in an ACZ would be a very small percentage of the total workforce in our country. But overall, if you look at the concept, yes, work from home, and I think it's a misnomer even work from home. It's actually work from anywhere. Because when an employee is not in office, he could be anywhere. He could be in his hometown. He could be whichever home he wishes to consider. <laughs> Absolutely. So geography loses its meaning. And as long as you are there on the web, on the net, and you are able to contribute to your working. Uh, and this is something which has evolved within a very short span of two years. This is now going to be the norm. But at the same time, we have to realize <clears throat> that this is a decision to be taken by individual employees and employers. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bhattacharya, you know, every policy has pros and cons. So we've spoken about, uh, you know, the kind of advantages it is going to have both for firms and the employees. But uh, how do you look at it? Uh, do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, the cons uh, for both the firms and the employees? Because in the longer run, is it sustainable or not? Can we go with this kind of model or not? Uh, I, yes, uh, for one, uh, see this... Uh... Uh, notification uh, as a stopgap arrangement uh, towards uh, a situation that will evolve over a period of time. Uh, there are uh, many macroeconomic consequences uh, of uh, the economy's return back from the COVID days. Uh, now, the macroeconomic consequences uh, can be seen in terms of what do you do uh, with, the, with the infrastructure that you have already created, in particularly in this case, the special economic zones and the facilities that you have created, forget about the regulations that require them to operate uh, from those ACZ units, but also there is a question of the infrastructure that you have created, what happens to those infrastructure. So therefore, even if work from home were to be the norm in the, in the, in the days to come, I would imagine that this uh, return to the work from home scenario have to be in a phased manner. So uh, even though uh, you know mandating that 50% should will be allowed to work from home is something that should be better left alone to the special economic units operators. But uh, for the sake of macroeconomic consequences, because suddenly if you see everybody continues to work from home, there are, there are problems and challenges for the infrastructure that you've already created. Having said that, let me also say that there will be different kinds of works which will require uh, work from home. There will be kinds of works in the science which will cannot be done through work from home. So every SZ unit will also will have those, those uh, um, uh, requirements. I mean, even in the ITS sector, there are jobs where work from home from some categories of people is just not possible. So therefore, I think uh, a 50% uh, a target is to begin with is not a bad idea, but this cannot be the final target. Ultimately, this has to be decided by the stakeholders, by industry, which are actually operating these units. Okay. okay. Uh, remember uh, that uh, work from home also means uh, imposing certain costs on employees. Work from home also means that it deepens or widens the kind of digital divide in many places. Uh, uh, there are employees who probably are not very much convenienced if they are allowed to work from home. The cost goes up goes up for them. The facilities, the infrastructure that are required from home work to home may not be adequate. So if you say that work from home is the norm to come, then we must realize that there are also micro consequences as well as 
macroeconomic consequences. So any policy that is in is in put in place must recognize both both these macroeconomic and microeconomic consequences. Uh, in my view. Okay, so I'll go uh, to Dr. Uh, Mr. Chandra uh, for the microeconomic and macroeconomic consequences uh, that Mr. Bhattacharya has pointed out. But uh, uh, before that, Mr. Agarwal, a quick question from you on the industry perspective. It's been a demand. But what Mr. Bhattacharya uh, says makes a lot of sense. It can be a stopgap arrangement, but looking at the kind of challenges and what we have witnessed over the last two years as well, the kind of heavy emotional toll on the employees also, the fact that, you know, uh, work loyalty coming in from the employees for the industry, has that been a challenge? I think whenever there is a, a such huge transformation in the way uh, a society is supposed to behave and working is uh, at least 50% of one's waking hours, uh, if there is a huge transformation in the way you spend those hours, I think, yes, it has it uh, has its own challenges in every possible way. Uh, they have been uh, very successfully, uh, I would say, managed uh, by the, by the I would say, by, by the humanity all across the kind of world because everybody knew that there's no alternative, but to do it so wherever it was possible. As, uh, uh, as already mentioned, you know, it's, it's not possible for all jobs to be done on a work-from-home basis or on a virtual basis. But whatever can be, it can it can be a very big advantage for the employer and the employee both. Uh, but there are of course always concerns uh, about uh, uh, about security, about uh, data security. I mean, uh, data security and uh, various other aspects regarding the productivity of the employees, which many large organizations might be better equipped to to actually facilitate for themselves. But for a smaller uh, enterprise. Uh, those systems are probably not uh, available right now. Absolutely. So all these things ultimately will prove to be a mix. Now, there, there are many options being discussed. Many, many companies are uh, giving the option of uh, an employee coming two days a week or three days a week to the office and the other day is working uh, from home or working from anywhere. Now, all these things are experiments that, which are being tried out. And probably we will reach an equilibrium across uh, various industries, across various types of companies or various types of employers. And that will take its own time. But these challenges, I would say, are welcome challenges. This is a way, this is a transformation that should have happened much earlier. Uh, but this has now been forced upon us uh, because there was uh, no alternative for a period of two years when everybody had to find a way to uh, get to work uh, virtually. So I think... Uh, that is, uh, uh, these challenges have to be taken positively. Absolutely. Uh, that, and with more and more employees looking for a permanent work from home kind of jobs, we've seen over the last two years, it mm. looks like, you know, a, a, a mm. good initiative uh, to ensure uh, workers mm. retention, employees retention as well uh, with companies. Uh, but Mr. Chandra, even though, you know, there is no doubt and we've all asserted that it's, it's a welcome move towards, uh, you know, ensuring ease of working for employees as well. There are huge advantages for the uh, companies as well. But uh, an important point that Mr. Bhattacharya raised about the microeconomic and macroeconomic consequences. Uh, what kind of impact do you see with this kind of stopgap arrangement, you know, actually becoming the new normal? You see, all black swan events have a profound impact on the way things are done. This leads to challenges and it is the leadership which will determine whether we get over these adaptive challenges. Now, coming specifically to what you asked, each firm will have to weigh the costs and benefits of, our, of outsourcing jobs or making their employees work from home. They have to keep in mind their competition. What is their competition doing? Because finally, they have to be competitive if they have to sell. Therefore, the company will have to decide in the long run. This particular notification is for a year, which may be extended. But in the long run, each company will have to decide which jobs can be done from home. The hybrid model, to my mind, is here to stay whether it will be 25%, 50%, that kind of flexibility should be given to individual companies. Companies in SEZs, which are actually looking at exports, will have to take their own decisions. And 
there would be a lot of space. I can see that space in several offices, which is not being utilized. But if the benefits outweigh the costs, this will continue. <clears throat> Mr. Bhattacharya, you know, worldwide, uh, this is the trend that we have been witnessing after the pandemic when, you know, life uh, began to return to normal. This is one thing that was uh, increasingly witnessed uh, across several countries and because of which countries have now adopted to either work from home becoming a permanent feature or a <coughs> hybrid model wherein, uh, you know, the employees are coming only for two, three days and the rest of the days they're working from home. What do you look at, you know, when you look at the consequences, the impact, the cost, the benefits and everything put together, largely what can be a permanent solution to this feature? Can we, you know, uh, we've just, uh, you know, seen some kind of amendments to the labor laws, but if this kind of arrangement tends to become a permanent, you know, feature and a new normal that we are already witnessing, what can be the other, uh, you know, a feature according to you which can become a more permanent one and more reliable one? The organizational structures will change. Per force, they'll have to change. There are problems with work from home. The organization culture will have to change. As Peter Drucker famously said, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Culture is how things are done in an organization. How do we do things here? All that has to change to, to take into account the new reality. And the new reality is upon us, world over, there is a movement towards work from home. And Indian companies cannot be far behind. But there has to be great flexibility about it. How do we employees interact? What is the psychological impact on them? How do we handle that? But the bottom line is that productivity of labor has to increase. That increases, the companies will remain competitive. And each company will have to take a decision and they have to come out with their own work from home policy. Absolutely. This has to be done as per their needs and as per their benefits, as you've rightly said. But Mr. Bhattacharya, you know, what the numbers suggest is a Forbes report says by 2025, an estimated 70% of the workforce across the world will be working remotely at least five days a month. So this, of course, not just in India, but worldwide mm. is one trend which is becoming uh, more and more, you know, uh, in fact, people are adapting to it. It's becoming a new normal across the world. Uh, of course, it's not sustainable, as you've said. It, it looks like a stopgap arrangement, or the new work-from-home rule that's been notified in India. But for, it, for such a kind of feature to be more and more sustainable, what do you suggest? Well, you know, um, uh, my first thing that we have to keep in mind is that uh, notifications and regulations are important uh, at a time when transition is called for. And this is the time where transition is taking place when we are returning from a COVID-like situation and entering into a near normal phase of work, whether it is at home or at an office. Now, what you need is, in addition to these notifications for the transition to the return to the old world. Now, the, the return, the new world, we, which we go back into, may well be 70% of work to home, work from home. Now, if that is the case, and if that is the prognost prognostication, then I would imagine that it is important to change the rules of business to some extent. For example, that uh, to what extent can work from an SZ unit can be outsourced. Uh, SZ uh, work uh, normally has to be undertaken within the confines of the SZ unit. Now, that is something that has to be handled. Number two would be adequate investment, not just by the company, but also by the government, because it is, after all, a public good, which is in the techn technical infrastructure, technological digital infrastructure. Now, that, you know, you can all see that the enterprises are now going in for a big time in getting 5G spectrum from the government. Uh, now, these things probably are happening. But the most important thing is that the physical infrastructure and the manner in which people uh, live and work, uh, they will, uh, will have to be given some support because it is, you know, if, if you look at the, the, the composition of India's workforce, whether it is a question of the organized worker or the unorganized worker, 
Now, not every home, very, very small percent of Indian homes are actually suitable for the kind of work to home, work from home environment that we are talking about. So if you are really indeed preparing for a 70% scenario of work from home, then I would imagine that there will be need for new infrastructure where there are, uh, there are you know, uh, uh, collective workspaces which will come up where the offices will not be able to get uh, people into the off in their workplaces, but there will be alternative places of work. So I think uh, the infrastructure and and, and, and investment in, in, in enterprise solutions will have to take place to address uh, to what I think is not a very monolithic kind of workforce that we have in India. Okay, Mr. Agrawal, you know, uh, given this churn that's happening between employees and employers globally, more and more countries are adapting to this uh, stopgap arrangement to say, of course, it's not sustainable given the kind of challenges it requires and which, uh, you know, uh, have been rightly asserted by Mr. Bhattacharya. But what we're also seeing is that more and more countries are now witnessing calls for, you know, shortening the work week, meaning three to four weeks uh, uh, of work every uh, week and then, you know, by alternating uh, groups of employees. That is a proposal that has also been made in India, but what are the kind of advantages uh, that that policy could have four day a week, but of course limited to 48 hours a week? And of course, given that that is sustainable, will that be a better working model? You see, there is an anomaly in that proposal because on the one hand, uh, we are talking of 48 hours a week, in four days, which means 12 hours a day. On the other hand, there is a regulation uh, about uh, which restricts the uh, work day to 10 hours in the, in the same labor laws. So, the, you know, there are a certain amount of anomalies and uh, which need to be sorted out in the labor code, uh, which I pointed out earlier also in, in one of my other uh, talks. And I think uh, all these issues should be sorted out. But again, coming to the macro level, Forgetting even for a moment about the SEZ issues, because SEZ is a technical issue, which is there because those SEZ units or SEZ companies are enjoying certain amount of benefits because they claim that they are uh, they are uh, uh, sequestered into a physical area, which is uh, for which they are doing only export activity, and there, therefore the question of physical location comes. There is no such restriction for the, the rest of the economy, rest of the companies or uh, even, uh, you know, businesses or anywhere. Even in those cases, I think one has to look for what is the right equilibrium, what is the right balance. Every company has to compete in the marketplace. If my competitor is able to be more efficient by having a larger number of workforce on a work from anywhere or work from home basis, therefore, uh, thereby reducing his cost or improving his efficiency, I would be having no alternative but to shift to that. And the reverse would also be true. There are certain jobs which actually, even if they can be done virtually, the, the performance would substantially increase when the, uh, when the employee is physically present, or there could be hybrid. So all of these things, they are not legislated. They do not be legislated, except for certain labor union laws, which, of course, labor code, for example, which has come up and which, as I said, have got certain anomalies which need to be again sorted out. Absolutely. So but there are anomalies, general, there are pros and basis, cons of all of these models that we've discussed. But what's important is that it should be an outcome-based working model, a positive outcomes for both for employers and the employees. For individual enterprise. Yeah, for individual enterprise and the employees. All right, so that having been said, I'll have to wind up the program. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time and, you know, uh, for sharing your views with us and our viewers. Absolute pleasure to have you all three with us on this edition of Perspective. Thank you to viewers, you as well, for your time. Keep watching Sunset TV and I'll see you same time next week. In fact, on Monday now with another brand new episode. Until then, take care of yourselves and keep watching Sunset TV.